at some point, things happen. You are the CEO. And the question is, have you prepared all your life to be there? Welcome to The Path, where I, Ryan Roslansky, sit down with the biggest change makers, innovators, and thought leaders in the world. And at the end, we'll see what turning points shaped the incredible journey of these success stories. Today, I sit down with Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella. Satya was named CEO of Microsoft in 2014. He has led the company through a major reinvention, and most importantly, ushered in a positive cultural shift internally among employees. I've seen it firsthand because Satya is my boss, and I've had a front row seat watching as he brings teams together to work towards executing on the vision of Microsoft. Here's how Satya Nadella paved his path. As a young Satya Nadella growing up in India, uh, I'd love to hear how that part of your life, you know, helped shape who you are as a professional today. You know, my parents played a massive role, I think, uh, who I am today. My father was, you know, a civil servant, an economist, and my mother was a Sanskrit professor. And so they were exact opposites of each other in some sense. They could not agree on anything except give me lots of room, quite frankly, and a lot of confidence to become my own person, pursue my own passions. I was mostly focused on playing cricket. I was not great academically. Growing up middle class in India, that sort of sometimes is challenging. But one of the interesting things that I distinctly remember is American technology, right? You know, I remember the first time uh, I started using a, a computer. The malleability of software was the thing that got me hooked. I, I would say I, I was like, you know, one of those people who took it and said, oh, that's my future. But it was there, it was latent. Satya went off to college first in India, where he got his bachelor's in electrical engineering, and then in Wisconsin, where he got his master's in computer science, his true passion. He ended up landing an engineering job at Sun Microsystems, a legendary company in the Silicon Valley that pioneered some of the most important technologies adopted by the computer industry. Although his time at Sun Microsystems was short, it continued to solidify a strong foundation in computer science and networking technologies. Eventually, you know, you get to this point in your career where there's a decision, and I'm sure, you know, you had the opportunity to go work basically anywhere you wanted to, but you chose Microsoft. Can you take us back to that, you know, I was 30 years ago now, that decision when you said, hey, you know, Microsoft's a place that I wanna, you know, go make a career out of. There's something here that's drawing me towards that. What were you kind of going through at that point? I felt like, wow, it's that feeling uh, of empowerment. I individually felt that I wanted to make sure that everyone else can feel because of computing. Uh, that, that freedom you get to express yourself. Satya joined Microsoft at the dawn of personal computing. Among his first projects was Windows NT, one of the first operating systems released by Microsoft. Around that same time, Satya was commuting every weekend from the Microsoft offices in Washington to Chicago, where he was working on his MBA. He went on to lead projects like the Interactive TV Experiment, Bing, Microsoft Office, and Xbox Live. And then as an EVP, he led the development of one of the world's largest cloud infrastructures in the world. I asked him, even though he spent 30 years in Microsoft, if he ever considered his path linear. I remember distinctly walking into Building 22 at Microsoft in 1992, thinking that's the greatest job on earth I have and I don't need anything more. There was never a time where I thought the job I was doing all through about my 30 years of Microsoft, that somehow I was doing that as a way to some other job. I felt the job I was doing there was the most important thing. I genuinely felt it. And then, of course, it helped me get my next job. As I always say, somebody, when they ask me, what's the best career advice? I say, look, don't wait for your next job to do your best work. I think sometimes we define our jobs narrowly. Uh, one of the managers I worked for sort of said to me, hey, what if you just did a thought experiment and sort of thought of your job not as your job, but as my job, and what would you do? Uh, that was like a very cold reframing. Then I was taking more of the challenges of my manager off their back so that I was sort of expanding my job, not waiting for my promotion or to be in their job. And it just naturally happened. So a little bit of it is it's never linear. But there are not, in fact, if anything, like it's not like the day before I was CEO, uh, somebody said you're going to be CEO. That was not even a thought. Uh, and the thing, though, is at some point, 
things happen. You are the CEO. And the question is, have you prepared all your life to be there, not hoping to, that to be a destination? Otherwise, you cannot grow uh, if you don't think your growth comes because of what you're doing. Among his many jobs over the years, Sati has also played the role of mentor and role model to professionals both in and out of the company. When someone comes to you and says, Satya, I want to be a leader, what's your best advice for me? Uh, what do you typically tell them? First of all, I say leadership is such a privilege, right? Whenever you're leading mm. someone, you don't think of it as an entitlement. You should think of it as a privilege. And the question is, how do you earn it? Like, how do you uh, stay true to that? The first thing is, uh, leaders have this innate capability to come into a situation that is ambiguous, uncertain, confusing, and bring clarity. Right. However smart you are, if you come in and create more confusion in an already uncertain time, that's not leadership. The second one is leaders create energy. Right. You know, basically, whenever you meet someone, um, you come out of it and say, oh, wow, you know, I was energized by that person. And this is not about, oh, my team is great. Everybody else sucks. That's not leadership. You know, it's about bringing all constituents inside your organization, outside your organization. Don't be confined by who reports to me or who's in my org. Uh, leaders are people who can create energy in broad swaths. And then the last thing is leaders also don't wait for the perfect pitch, right? Which is, or the perfect weather to perform, which is, you got to take the hand you've been dealt and with all the constraints. After all, you know, leaders solve over-constrained problems by knowing how to unconstrain themselves and their teams uh, and drive success. So these are the three things I'd say, even Ryan, for me, you know, look, none of us are perfect at this. Each day I look at it and say, God, could I have brought more clarity? Could I have created more energy in that meeting? Did I unconstrain my team and make some decisions so that the team can succeed? Those are the things that I think all leaders uh, have to sort of really hold themselves uh, up to. So here's my takeaway. Like Satya, if you let curiosity and continuous learning steer your career path, then every job you have will fill you with excitement. Satya stayed modest and inquisitive as he moved around different jobs at Microsoft. That curiosity helped him learn how to develop well-rounded skills, lead with empathy, build amazing products, and learn how to adapt to changing market conditions, all of which have helped position Microsoft for long-term success. So in your path, prioritize your thirst for knowledge when making decisions. If you combine that with a little bit of ambition, you can propel your career to unexpected and fulfilling heights.